Hey, this is part two of my interminable discussion of the Halo Legends anime collection. Prototype gives us another combat story, again with a dark theme. A squad leader, codenamed Ghost, has a reputation for being cold and heartless, a man who loses his whole platoon if it will accomplish the mission objective. With his current unit ordered to destroy all the classified material on a base that's hopelessly surrounded by alien attackers, this story also throws in five minutes of well-animated ground-based mecha combat action, with lots of missile storms and big explosions. The story is meant to carry an emotional charge, but it fizzles badly because it's so predictably telegraphed from the opening scene. It spends way too much of its meager 12 minutes on secondary characters and big explosions, and not enough on the personality of the main character. The resulting emotions are shallow and paint by numbers, the personality change totally unconvincing, and I think it got it wrong. The point shouldn't be finding something worth dying for. The point should be finding something worth living for. A commando mission on a small scale drives the babysitter as three elite hell jumper commandos and one super soldier Spartan are dropped into enemy territory to assassinate a leader. Apparently there's some interbranch rivalry going on because especially the hell jumper sniper resents being made backup to the stranger on this mission. As they work their way towards the target, will they come to respect one another or will their interbranch rivalry ruin the mission? Again, the art has a very traditional, modern anime style to it that's undistinguished. This is the longest story and fairly decent for a short story. It crystallizes the personalities quickly and stays small by going light on the combat action. There are no big fleet battles, clashing armies, or missile storms here. stays on mission, which is the characters, and gives enough time between fights to let them grow a bit. The final segment is the package. It serves up a rather straightforward raid on an enemy cruiser to recover a mysterious captured package of some importance. This is probably the most non-stop action of all the segments, though it's not one long drawn-out fight, but rather a rapid series of skirmishes. Unlike, say, Prototype, which had a long action scene of similar missile volleys and explosions, the running fight in the package dances seamlessly from one environment to another, each presenting a unique choreography. There's a dogfight in space and a boarding party, a race through a gauntlet of enemies, a daring leap through space, and a one-on-one -on -one confrontation followed by a desperate escape. What little character it makes time for has to be squeezed into tiny exchanges between gunfire, and that ain't much. This one is directed by Shinji Aramaki, who directed the two recent Appleseed movies and is credited as consultant on a lot of the other segments. He also has a real flair for the dramatic moment, a few key arresting heartbeats spread throughout the action. In terms of pure adrenaline, this is the hottest segment of the lot, though it's also the one that has the least emotion and the least interesting characters. It's also the only story with an actual victory. I liked the package, even though I had no idea what the significance of the MacGuffin of the title was. I'm sure I was supposed to have recognized it from the gaming universe when it was revealed. And speaking of revealing things, I guess there's some rule that we can never see the Master Chief's face? Most of the stories in Halo Legends ended on a somber mood. That's probably inevitable for a war collection. All the shorts are decently animated. There's nothing obviously low-budget cheating in the lot, though one of the styles didn't work and only the last one is really noticeably well animated. I also noticed that many of the shorts used the same theme music, a rather somber dirge that also played on the menu screen. That's not a problem for any one chapter, but if you watch the whole bunch at once, you're going to notice. On the whole, I think I would have started the collection off with one of the human stories, such as the babysitter, homecoming, or prototype, and saved the history lesson of origin and the alien story of Duel for later in the series, once I got interested in the world. 
Except for the package and odd one out, all the directors here, while established animators within their studio, are directing a complete story for the first time. That provides an interesting chance for them to show their stuff and for us to see some new talent at work. Though, they're under some obvious restrictions imposed by Microsoft on story content and continuity of the game world, whatever that is. I like the old anime anthologies like Neo Tokyo, Robot Carnival, and Memories, and it's good to have an excuse for another one. It's probably true that parts of this collection are wasted on viewers like me who haven't played the game. I'm sure I failed to appreciate some of the finer points, and I don't even know enough to recognize what they were. I'm certain I'm not the target demographic for this. Fair enough. Despite that, I found one of the stories worth watching, and one not too bad. I give the whole collection three stars on the whole. The one story that was worth going out of your way to watch isn't worth it enough to get the entire collection for. On the other hand, maybe this will prove to be a good crossover title. Fans not accustomed to anime might pick it up. The industry could use a new gateway drug. One extra on the US DVD is a commentary track by the US producers. They told me a lot about how the stories fit into the Halo canon, and explained a few missing points there, but it didn't say much about the actual stories. And I think they might as well leave the commentary track to the gamers. Thanks for watching.